Wasting time with Arrow Productions. Three things you won't find in alternate history. Food and drink edition. Number one. What if olive trees had been allowed in New Spain? I saw this question in the political memoir cited in the description by Braulio Maldonado. He was the first governor of Baja California after statehood and served from 1953 to 1959. He wrote the book shortly after that and then added another section around 1970. While there are a few very old olive trees in all of the Californias, Maldonado points out that they generally weren't allowed in the colonial period. This protectionist measure in favor of Spain set the stage for future dietary patterns. In the book, he points out that Mexican food would have been different and people would have been healthier. As governor, Maldonado tried to popularize eating and growing olives, but he was largely unsuccessful. Since then, Mexican food has gone global. Although Maldonado did not live long enough to see fusion cuisine, he might have enjoyed the Mexican-influenced dishes that use olive oil. Number two. What if Pepsi had lost the Cola Wars in 1934? The late 1800s was the time of soda. As the drinks became more popular, many businesses started and there was great variety. Pepsi was part of the trend, but as everyone knows, Coke was dominant. Pepsi was an also-ran. The Cola Wars started in 1934. The standard size was six ounces. Pepsi doubled it for the same price. The ad here was from 1939 or later. This is when the jingle came out. This was the beginning of soda driving the obesity epidemic. If Pepsi had been unsuccessful, there would have been at least two consequences. First, the trend towards supersizing would not have happened or it would have been delayed. Second, Coke and Pepsi would not have crowded everything else out of the beverage market. Coffee, tea, water, and so on would not have lost ground to sodas. Number three. What if Starbucks had maintained its original focus? When Starbucks opened in 1971, the marketing concept was most likely that it would be a head shop for people who like caffeine. It was part of the do-it-yourself ethos of the early 70s. They sold all sorts of coffee accessories, which were unusual in the U.S. at the time. And since their focus was legal, they also sold coffee, tea, and spices. This picture is of their headquarters, where they moved after things changed. Although they occasionally offered free samples, Starbucks did not se start selling cups of coffee until 1982. After that, Starbucks went from being a regional chain in Seattle to national, then international prominence. During that time, they accomplished two things. First, they introduced the U.S. to espresso and other upscale coffee drinks. Second, they managed to turn coffee into a profoundly unhealthy platform for fat and sugar. If Starbucks had maintained their original focus, they could have gone international in a different way. Had they never served coffee, they could have been like William Sonoma, but for drinks instead of food. If this had happened, they would not be part of the obesity problem as they are now. The brand would also be more upscale and less of a dessert-oriented McDonald's. So that's another edition of Three things you won't find in alternate history. Have you found anything else? Let us know in the comments.